Happy, Happy fourth, fourth Sunday, Sunday in October. In October. I can tell I something's can tell going something on with my on sound. My... <laughs> yeah, <let go. laughs> All right. This is uh, author Sierra London, and I want to welcome you to Women on Words. And it's the fourth October of the month, and it is time for book club. So I have my co-host, author L. Marin, here with me, and writer Michelle Ingrid. Ladies, y'all on the line? We're here. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> All right. So y'all know we're normally here on the third uh, Sunday of the month, but October has been crazy. Um, so <laughs> I do want to thank you all for, for joining me because I know that you all could be other places on a Sunday afternoon. So the book club choice um, read for this month is Go Deep by, is it Rilsey Adams? Am I saying her name right, Michelle? I think so. I think that's how it says. Okay. So let me read the back cover for you. So the title is Go Deep, Unexpected Lovers, Book One. So y'all know what y'all getting, right? This book is hot. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It was all supposed to be so simple. Uh, Navara Howard is an erotic writer in a rut. Her readers are fed up of her stale plots, and Navarra can't blame them. She's been celibate for over a year and a half since finding her now ex-boyfriend side chick positive pregnancy test on her bathroom counter. Okay, so he pretty raggedy, okay? How can we write, (laughs) how can she write steamy romances if she can barely remember how body parts go into the other? Navarra enlists the help of her best friend, Xander, to revive the inspiration that used to have her sitting comfortably at the top of her game. What happens when the set hits deeper than either of them expected and the tender emotions can no longer be denied? Navarra and Xander's arrangement has gone far deeper than intended. Will their friendship and their heart survive the fall? All right, ladies, Michelle, take it away. Woo, girl, okay. So this story is, let's just be honest, is really hot. And um, we have, this is an interesting premise because we have best friends. And Mm. so I have a question for you guys to start us off. We know they've been friends since their mothers met when um, they were baked, pretty much when their moms were pregnant. And we know that they have relied on each other to the point where they followed each other to college, and they have been best friends ever since, and they've been the area of the Washington, D.C. area since um, college ended. So this book, to me, asks the question, can a man and woman be just friends? And I want to know what you guys First, I want to know your opinion on that question, and then I'll ask my next question in regards to the story. So um, I believe a man and a woman can be best friends. Um, I absolutely believe that. But I think what's interesting about Xander and Navi's relationship is along the way, they have made decisions that show you that they are more than best friends already. Um, I Mm -hmm. think that's what's interesting about them. But absolutely, I I honestly believe men and women can have asexual relationships where they care very deeply about one another and not have a romantic interest. I think um, so many times that we meet men and women that cross that boundary and they shouldn't. You know, because somewhere along the line, they've got it twisted that if someone has a different body part than you all, then y'all should be sticking them together. And, um, and okay, maybe I shouldn't have said that looking at Elmer's face. (laughs) But, but, But that's how I think so many things get messed up when people feel 
what what they describe in the book as chemistry, but you have to decide what type of chemistry that is, right? I mean, you have coworkers you work with, and y'all have great coworker chemistry, but that don't mean when you work it late at night, you go sticking them body parts together, you know. So you have well, to decide the way you work. But that's what I'm saying. Like you have to look at where that chemistry is truly coming from, and is it truly a romantic chemistry? Or do y'all connect in other ways and you appreciate each other that way, but it doesn't mean that you cross that physical, you know, that intimate uh, boundary. And so for me, this couple, like the decisions that they made, like you mentioned, you know, their parents were connected, their two moms are friends. You mentioned decisions they made about school, where they live, like they've already been making decisions to keep them close. Because let's face mm-hmm. it, you can have a best friend and they live in another state, another country, and y'all still stay close without deciding we got to live in the same city, go to the same college. So um, to mm-hmm. me, when I read the type of decisions that they had made and they had conversations about it, like this tells me all along something was going on that they never acknowledged. They just kind of took it for granted. Yeah, that's my take. Absolutely. And Michelle, I can't Absolutely. see you on screen, so I'm not sure what's going okay, on. Okay, give me a but... minute. Give me a minute. Okay. Give me a minute. I'm trying. To... My, I was okay. using my Mac. My Mac is okay. telling me. All right. But, you know, but... okay. <laughs> well, okay. while we wait on that, I will. Um, I'll chime in, and I agree with Sierra. Men and women can absolutely be friends. They can be best friends without crossing the line of having to be intimate. And. Mm-hmm. I also agree that in this particular book, they were already more than just friends because Mm -hmm. neither one of them could keep a relationship together without the other, you know, their significant other being jealous. Everybody Mm -hmm. around them, including their circle of friends, could see where that was going except them. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I absolutely agree that they were already in a relationship, but they just didn't know it. Yeah. Okay. So now I'm going to ask my first question having to do directly with the story. What did you think about the relationship between Nevaya and Xander at the start of the book? Because, okay, can we throw the words out there? Tired, stale. Uninspired. <laughs> and these words send our girl tumbling. These words mm-hmm. send her tumbling to calling him at what I believe is one o'clock in the morning. He is mm-hmm. in bed with his girlfriend. She called yeah. him. First of all, she picked up the phone and called him at one o'clock in the morning. But I have to ask, what did you guys think about the fact that not only did she call him, but he answered? And not only did he answer that call, he got out of bed with the woman that he was calling his girlfriend, and he went to Nevada. Now, I'm going to tell you, I've had men in my life who had female friends, but there's a whole different category when you get out of my bed to go to your friend in the middle of the night. If she's not hurt, if she's not bleeding, and if she's not being beaten, I'm wanting to know, why are you getting out of my bed to go chase this? What do you guys think about that moment? That was an important moment for me in the book. So, um, okay, so for me, th- there was a couple of things going on first. But that this is just me, my issue, right? So at the beginning of the book, Xander is in a relationship. Um, Navara, um, Navari, the, the heroine. She is in, she's it's post breakup, okay? So she's she's missing some male body parts here, um, in her life. So I don't I did it didn't bother me that she called him at one AM. It really didn't, because mm-hmm. they are best friends. And when you're in an emotional rut, like regardless of your if your best friend is male or female when you are hurting you reach out to your best friend that i could totally understand as a romance author i read reviews when they are hurtful there are times that i want to be cussing everybody out cuz i'm like you ain't write no book so you better get your lips off my book and your and your and your fingers off the keypad so <laughs> 
so I could I could totally understand the emotion of that. I think the part that got me was his response. That's what told me what she meant to him in this relationship beyond best friend. Um, so best friend, calling best friend in the middle of the night, I feel like you can call your best friend at any time, you know, if you're hurting. Lisa shaking her head, no. But um, no. but <laughs> but the fact that he was in bed with his woman, but let me just say that with his woman of two months, okay, with his woman of two months, matter. Against his best friend <laughs> of 20-something years. I'll put that there. I don't care. I know you don't. I can mm-hmm. tell by the way you're shaking your head, but Michelle gave me this moment, so I'm going to take it. Oh, <laughs> take it. Let's not get me in trouble. Oh, my goodness. I'm trying to get me in trouble. Okay. You know what I thought? This was a group project. <laughs> no, it's a group project. <laughs> she gave me this moment. <laughs> So, so I'm going to say I would not be okay if I was dating a guy and his best friend, whether male or female, unless it was bleeding, seizure activity, gunshot wound, um, him getting out of the bed going saying, I need to go see what my best friend needs. And I'm again, I'm like, okay, is she bleeding? Did she have a seizure and it's still ongoing and her medication is missing? Has she been shot near a vital organ where there's, you know, significant blood loss, um, a threat (laughs) that she may not live to talk about this tomorrow? Those are just some of the questions that come to my mind as a former health care (laughs) provider. Lisa, over to you. (laughs) Thank you. <laughs> now, I am not a former health care provider. I am a woman. And I guarantee you, if my man got up out the bed with me at 1 o'clock in the morning to go see about another woman, I don't care if it, unless it's his mama, we got problems. Yeah. <laughs> about you will not get up then. out the bed with me because she's having a crisis about a daggone review. Come on mm-hmm. now. That's not important. You can wait till morning. You can wait until morning. And I wish somebody would call my house at 1 o'clock in the morning over there. He would get cussed out. Uh, okay. And don't forget his parting words. I don't care if that's your best friend of 2,800 years. Uh-huh. <laughs> don't call my man. Do not do not call my man for no mess like that. That's ridiculous. Mm. So, she didn't call your man. Way, she called her man. <laughs> no, she. you absolutely right. That is why there's a problem. He was her man. And yeah. the girlfriend knew that. <laughs> that was the whole problem in the scenario. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wasn't loyal to his girlfriend. He was loyal to his best friend. Yeah. And he was in love with his best friend, and the girlfriend knew it. That's yeah. That's all that was. <laughs> and the way he just jumped up out the bed was going to sneak out and, and text her later. What? No. <laughs> you already know you're doing it wrong if you're going to sneak and do something. <laughs> yes. Yes. It seems very But you will get up, get dressed in the middle of the night and run to her because she's crying over a freaking review on a book. Come on, man. Now, I, I, I'm a writer, and I know you can get in your feelings, but a review? Come on. There's nothing wrong with you. Go to sleep. Wake up, <laughs> and we'll talk about it in the morning. <laughs> uh, Lisa? Uh, I am so Ma'am. glad that I have Michelle's phone number. Michelle, I'll be calling you because obviously Lisa is insensitive when it comes to book reviews. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't the book I'm review. It's the disrespect. One in the morning, I'm sleeping. <laughs> I'm you are this. not sleeping. You are not sleeping, Lisa. <laughs> okay, I'm not. I will say but he was. I have called my best friend in the middle of the night. I have called Sierra in the middle of the night, I, and I can actually remember. One time I was on the road and got stopped. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Uh-huh. The next time I called her at 1.30 or 2 in the morning, I was literally in the hospital where the doctor had given me 